This is episode 7 about the giraffe and the pony and me. Is there a problem? asked the Duke. If there is, do please tell me. I'd like to hear it. I don't like to sound ungrateful or pushy, murmured the giraffe. But we do have one very pressing problem. We are all absolutely famished. We haven't eaten for days. My dear giraffe, cried the Duke, how very thoughtless of me. Food is no problem around here. I'm afraid it is not quite as easy as all that, said the giraffe. You see, I myself happened to be... You don't, don't tell me, cried the Duke. I know it already. I am ex... I am an expert on animals of Africa. The moment I saw you, I knew you were no ordinary giraffe. You were of the drainy giraffe. Drainiest giraffe, Verity, are you not? You are absolutely right, Your Grace, said the giraffe. Said the giraffe. But the trouble with us is that we only eat. You don't have to tell me that either, cried the Duke. I know perfectly well a drainy giraffe can eat only one kind of food. Am I not right in thinking the pink and purple flowers of the tinkle tinkle tree are your only diet? Yes, sighed the giraffe. And that's been my problem ever since I have arrived on these shores. That is no problem. All here at Hampshire's house, said the Duke. Look over there, my dear giraffe, and you will see the only plantation of the tinkle tinkle tree in the entire country. The giraffe looked. She gave a gasp of astonishment, and first she was so overwhelmed she couldn't even speak. Great tray, great tears of joy began running down her cheeks. Help yourself, said the Duke. Eat all you want. Oh my nest! My sainted souls, gasped the giraffe, on oh, my naked neck, I cannot believe what I am seeing. The next moment, she was galloping full speed across the lawns and whinnying with excitement. And the last we saw of her, she was bearing her head in the beautiful pink and purple flowers that had blossomed on the tops of the trees all around her. As for the monkey, the duke went on, I think he will also be pleased what I have offered. All my estate. There are thousands and of giant nut trees. Nuts? cried the monkey. What kind of nuts? Walnuts, of course, said the duke. Walnuts? screamed the monkey. Not walnuts? You don't really mean walnuts? You're you're pulling my leg. You're joking. You can't be serious. I must have heard wrong. There's a walnut tree right over there, the Duke said, pointing. The monkey took off like an arrow and flew. And if 
few seconds later, he was high up in the branches of the walnut tree, cracking the nuts and guzzling what was inside. The leaf, that leaves only the pelly, said the duke. Yes, said the pelican, nervously, but I am afraid what I eat does not grow on trees. I only eat fish. Would it be too much trouble if I wondered if I were to ask for a reasonably fresh piece of haddock or cod every day? Haddock or cod? shouted the duke, spitting out the words all as though it made a bad taste in his mouth. Cast your eyes, my dear Pelly, over to the south. The pelican looked across the ve the vast rolling east, and in the distance he was a he saw a great river. That is the river of hemp, cried the duke. The fin the finest salmon river in the whole Europe. Salmon screeched the pelican. Not salmon! You don't really mean salmon! It's full of salmon, the duke said, and I own it. You can help yourself. Before he had finished talking, before he had finished speaking, the pelican was in the air. The duke and I watched him as he flew full speed towards the river. We saw him circle over the water, then he dived and disappeared. A few moments later, he was in the air again, and he had a giant salmon in his beak. I stood on the lawn with the duke on. I stood alone. I stood alone with the duke on the lawn beside the great house. Well, Billy, he said, I'm glad they're all happy. But what about you, my lad? I am. But what about you, my lad? Uh, and I'm wondering if you happened to have just one extra special little wish for yourself. If you do, I'd love you to tell me about it. There is a sudden, there was sudden tingling in my toes. It felt like, it felt as though something tremendous might be going to happen to me any moment. Yes, I murmured nervously. I do have one extra special little wish. And what might that be? said the Duke in a kind voice. There is an old wooden house near where I live, I said. It's called the Grubber, and a long time ago it used to be a sweet shop. I have wished and wished that one day somebody might come along and make it into a marvellous new sweet shop all over again. Some 
somebody, cried the Duke. What do you mean, somebody? You and I will do it. We'll do it together. We'll make it into the most wonderful sweet shop in the world. And you, my boy, will own it. Whenever the old Duke got excited, his his moustache started to bristle and jump about. Right now they were jumping up and down so much it looked as though he had a uh, looked as though he had a squirrel on his face. By God, sir, he cried, waving his stick. I shall buy the place today when we'll then we'll get to work and have the whole thing ready in no time. You just wait and see that sort of a sweet shop where we are going to make it out. We're going to make it out of this rubber place of yours. It was amazing how quickly things began to happen. After that, the, there was no problem about buying the house because it was owned by the giraffe and the penny and the monkey and they insisted And they insisted upon giving it to the Duke for nothing. The, then builders and carpenters moved in and rebuilt the whole inside so that once again it had floors. What on all floors they put together yeah, rows and rows of tall shelves and there were ladders to climb up to the highest shelves and baskets to carry what you bought. and fudge and nuggets began to began to fill in shelves. They came by airplane from very com from every country in the world. Most wild wonder wondrous things you could Eve ever imagine. There were gum twizzlers and fizzle nicklers from China, frog frog bubblers and spit sinklers from Africa. Tummy ticklers and gobwanklers from Fiji Islands and lip sucker, lip lickers and plush nuggets from the Land of Midnight Sun. 